Secretary Matt Hancock. Morning to you, Mr. Good Hancock. morning. We have a lot to talk about, about how you're handling coronavirus, but we have to begin with a word about those terrible events in Reading last night. Now, people have heard that this isn't being treated as a terrorist incident, but some of the detail may make them think, sounds a bit funny. Is the government treating it that way? Is COBRA going to meet? What, what more can you tell us? Well, obviously, my first thoughts are with the family and the friends of those who've lost their lives and the, uh, those who are currently uh, being treated uh, for the injuries that they suffered. Um, this is not currently being treated as a terrorism incident, uh, but of course we're closely monitoring the situation. Uh, I've spoken to the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister will be uh, engaging with those police who are leading this on the ground later today. The, it's a police operational matter now, so obviously I can't go further into any of the details, uh, but all I can say is that we will be seeking to bring the full force of the law to, to bear on the perpetrators. But it's something that the Home Secretary and Prime Minister need to take an interest in, not something they can simply say, he is a terrible crime, but one we can leave to the police. Well, it's, it's clearly a, a, a terrible crime, uh, whatever the motivation, and we'll be making sure that the police have all the support they need to, to do whatever they choose to do operationally. Now, let's turn to what would have been the big news today, would have been all over the front pages and leading our news bulletins. The sense that this is a week in which something is going to change in the handling of the coronavirus, that we are going to see what we're told in Whitehall is being called our Independence Day on right. July the 4th. Is that what it is? Will July the 4th be this big moment of unlockdown? Well, I think that we will, we're about to see another step in the plan. And this week, we will announce further details of the measures that we can take to relieve some of the national lockdown measures at the start of July, including on July the 4th. That's part of the plan that we've been working through. Uh, we set it out uh, last month, and the plan's clearly working because the number of new infections is coming down. The number of people on ventilated beds in hospital, for instance, is coming down. And thankfully, the number of people who are, who are dying is coming down. So the plan is working. We're working through the plan. And the next step of the plan is at the start of July. Well, let's us move through that plan as well then. Two metres rule. Everybody's talking about it. Let's just start with the principle. Mm. Do you accept that in principle it's got to go or be amended if thousands of jobs, thousands of businesses are to be saved? You've got to find a way to do it. Well, I very much hope that we can, and that review will uh, will come to bear this week, and we'll be setting out further details this week on the uh, on on the measures in that space. Now, just to be clear, what you mean by that, though, you mean if I'm watching and I'm a pub owner or a cafe owner or have a yeah. B and B, I'll have the answers. It won't just be oh, we'll wait for another review and a document and a regulation. That's You'll right. tell me this week. You yeah. can reopen without the two meter rules, providing you do this, this, and this. Yes, we're going to set out those details absolutely this week. And uh, look, I get the, the problems with the two metre rule. Of course, ultimately, they're problems with the fact that there's a virus. And the challenge for the, for the country, for all countries, is how to get as much of normal life as possible going again. All the things that we care about. You know, it's, it's Father's Day today. I wish I could go to the pub for lunch as I normally would on Father's Day with the family, and I'm sure you do too. And the, how do we get as much of these things that people love back in a way that is safe and doesn't lead to the resurgence of the virus as we've seen in some other parts of the world? Well, let's talk about what that way or ways may be. You and I are here two metres apart. There's tape all over here. We're yeah. being very careful, yeah. as so many people are. If, in the future, we wanted to, to be closer so that a business could open or a restaurant, would we have to put a mask on, for example? Would that be necessary? Well, there's all sorts of mitigations that you can put in place to uh, be physically closer than two metres, but not have the transmission of the virus or the risk of transmission that you would otherwise have. So, for instance, we've seen in lots of uh, the retail that's open, lots of shops, perspex screens. Obviously, you can be closer than two metres with a perspex screen and the risk of transmission is very, very low. 
Masks also uh, make an impact, hence the rule that masks must be worn on public transport and in hospitals. Um, and there's all there's other mitigations that you can put in place as well. well. Back to back, I mean, it wouldn't make for a very good interview <laughs> if we sat back to back. Well, it wouldn't make for a very good pub lunch either. But back to back is much safer than face to face. Uh, just so I've got clarity before we move on. This will all be written down. If you do this, this, this and this, two metres, it's gone. Well, we're going to set all of that out okay. this week. Now, what will worry some people listening to that is they'll think, well, hold on a second, I remember the chief medical officer saying the two metre rule is going to carry on for as long as this epidemic continues. They might remember the chief scientific advisor saying the risk at one metre is 10 to 30 times higher than the risk at two metres. So they may be rather alarmed by this change. Well, uh, I think there's two ways to respond to that. The first is that, of course, we're learning more about the virus all the time, and the decisions that we take will be, of course, guided by the science, as we have been throughout this. Um, and also, the second thing to say is that um, the, the proposals that we'll bring forward are how you can safely, safely uh, reduce uh, the two metres without with the sort of mitigations that we've been talking about guided by the science is an interesting choice of phrase have they signed it off have patrick witty have uh, patrick, patrick Ballance, witty I'm sorry. that's a combination of the pa two i i think they'll patrick both Ballance enjoy that no end. well uh, have they, they joined they, together yeah, have they joined they, together to say yes they've been we been, agree we've been guided by the science guided, throughout this which but is he very the word guided you know, i think guided is the best way of describing it because you know i i am i am as the health secretary I am accountable, and the Prime Minister is accountable, uh, for the decisions that we take, and these are judgments taking everything into account, guided by the best possible scientific advice. I've, that's been my case throughout. They're always the language that Understood. I've tried to use. So the other thing that people are desperate to know is whether kids will be able to go back into mm. school. In numbers, yes. in full, yes. in September. A yes. full return was yes. the phrase the Prime Minister yes. used. Will the changes you're talking about... Yes to two metres down to one metre plus, is that going to be enough or there are more changes you'll need? Well, it will, uh, uh, the, the measures that we're setting out later today, uh, later this week, sorry, will undoubtedly help uh, with schools. But on schools, the approach that we're taking is it's so, it, it, the, the, we must find a way to, to allow all schools to open for all pupils in as safe a way as possible. Now, in Northern Ireland, they've cut it to a metre. That's one of the ways they've done it. With other further mitigations in place, absolutely. Further safety measures alongside a change in the distance. That's how they've done it in Northern Ireland. And that's and how think, in England it's likely to be. Well, I, I talk a lot to my Northern Ireland counterpart, who's, mm. a, uh, who's, who's a great man. OK. Again, people will have worries. You'll know there are a lot of parents very fearful, a lot of teachers very fearful, and again, they look to what you're being told by the scientific advisors. Sage, according to the minutes of that advisory body, said that reopening schools could lead to, quote, significant transmission and, quote, have a large effect on the epidemic. Yeah. So all of these things can be done when it is safe to do so in a way that it's safe to do. So, uh, you know, the number of new transmissions has come right down. And the whole strategy is to replace, over time, and when it's safe to do so, the national measures with more targeted local measures, whether that's an individual local outbreak that needs to be brought under control or whether that's individuals being asked to isolate because they're more at high risk, because they've been traced as having been in contact with somebody who's tested Understood. positive. Now, you're very clear about the fact that you've got to be prepared for new outbreaks, yeah. local, you hope, and to deal with them. Yeah. And you've talked about having a plan. You always say it's going to the plan. Yeah. Can we just remind ourselves, we'll just look at a little graphic that was put up around about on the internet, what the plan used to have. There is yeah. something that was produced only this week, a woman looking at her phone for the new NHS COVID-19 app. Yeah. And the critical word there is critical. It will play yeah. a critical role in we'll how the UK controls yeah. the spread of coronavirus. Yeah. Yet you said, at the same time as this was coming out, well, don't worry, we haven't got an app and we may never have one. I, I'm not sure I took quite that tone, uh, Nick. I, I, um, of course, uh, we'll get there. We'll get there with the app. Uh, it has, um, yeah, everybody knows the challenges that we've had in, but also 
I was only prepared to recommend to people that they download an app when I'm really confident in it. Were, so, you, were you surprised? Were you angry when they said to you, look, I'm really sorry, I know you promised it would come. It's nah, not ready. No, angry is the wrong word because, um, I, I, you know, throughout this, we have run a whole series of projects uh, not knowing where, whether they'd uh, come off and some have come off sooner rather than later. So, you know, in the same way that we have a trial with, uh, with more than a dozen different drugs in it, two big trials, um, and this week we saw dexamethasone coming forward. That's a success. On the app, it's been a bit slower than I would have wanted. But there's a bit of a pattern here, Secretary of State, isn't there? When something goes wrong, you go, well, look, let's be grown up about it. Things go wrong. And the public, I think, understand yeah. this is brand new. Yeah. But at the time, yeah. you don't say that. You don't say, look, we'll do our best and maybe and I perhaps. do, I do. Matthew and Gold, Chief Executive of NHSX, said it is essential as part of the strategy. The Prime Minister said we will develop a world-beating system by the beginning of June. No, so the uh, truth is, well, you've got me... people's expectations. But now you say, well... No, no, uh, what I'm saying is that throughout this, from the start, we're running at things before we know whether or not they'll come off. The vaccine is another case in point. You know, I don't know whether the Oxford vaccine will work, and nor do you, and nor does anyone, but I'm sure as hell going to give them every support I can to get it to work. On the test and trace, the Prime Minister said we will have it up and running by the 1st of June, and we did that early, and it will be world-beating, and we will get there. Well, just one last one on the app. You said there was a problem with Apple. Apple told the BBC, we don't know what they mean by this hybrid yeah. model between the one you wanted to develop and theirs. They haven't even spoken to us about it. Well, that, that's not true. And um, We were talking at very senior levels, and I'm sure, and, and, and obviously... Since uh, the so, news, to Apple, you have talked to Apple. We've not been talking. Trillium. We've been talking to them for weeks, and they and I think they'd reflect that if you ask them that now. Have you got a way of dealing with this? If against all your hopes and all the work, you can't get an app up and running successfully. Well, uh, the human contact tracing is working well, and uh, uh, the technology and an app is an additional support to that. You know, I, I think it is it will be helpful when we can get it up and running. Now, one of the things they've done in other countries is to look at who goes into a place. If you mm. go to a bar, if you go to a pub, if you go to a restaurant, you have to write down your name, you have to write down your details in case there's an outbreak. Mm. Is that the sort of approach we could have to see now because the app isn't doing that job for you? Mm. Well, I certainly wouldn't rule that out because that's it's not linked to the app, It's uh, but it is an additional way that you can do contact tracing so that you can find people who might have been at risk. And it, it plays into the broader strategy, which is that if you can be more targeted, especially now there's a, a relatively low number of cases, if you can be more targeted, and then obviously you're still asking people to isolate for two weeks, which is a big ask, uh, whether it's because the app tells you that they've been at risk and close or because of this sort of measure. For instance, they have in New Zealand, I think. Yeah, just describe what it would mean. I, I go to a pub under these new rules, we hope, in July. What would I then be required to do? Uh, well, this is something that they've done in New Zealand, and uh, what happens is that you simply ensure that the... Uh, when you take a restaurant booking, for instance, you take a contact, uh, uh, contact details so that if somebody tests positive and has been in that, uh, in that um, venue uh, in, in proximity, you'll be able to contact the people who might be at risk. And that then makes it safer to be able to lift other measures. As I say, this isn't, you know, there's lots of ideas out there. That's one of them, yeah. Uh, and without the app, obviously, the importance of testing and tracing becomes even more important. I just yeah. want to show you another graphic that's been coming up at Downing Street day after day, if I could now, which is about the issue mm. of testing. You'll see there, that's the daily update yeah. we get each day. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives us the number of tests, but under people tested, yeah. unavailable, yeah. unavailable. Because in the end, the guys who were in charge of statistics said the numbers we were getting were positively misleading. Yeah. So Why the, can't we know this data? Uh, so the people tested data is harder to get than the number of tests uh, because it, it's a measure of whether it's the first time somebody's been uh, tested. And so somebody could have been tested a long time ago and then retested. 
Um, and so uh, it, I want to get these statistics right. And you had a discussion with Ian Diamond earlier on this program. And therefore, we're not prepared to publish uh, statistics unless we're comfortable with them and very and confident that they are accurate. It has been a month. I mean, people understand it's difficult, but it's been a whole month since that. Uh, was last yes, week. but in that time, we've also introduced much more testing. So the, the, I think the reason it worries people is it's a knock to people's confidence. And a lot of the things we've seen, it feels like a U-turn to people on the app. I know you're saying it is, and that's what it feels like to many people. On testing, they think, all oh, the figures are a bit dodgy, and now they're not coming up with new figures. It makes them think, I'm not sure people are being quite straight with me. Yeah, I, I disagree with this. And actually, I agree with Ian Diamond, the national statistician, who said, I, 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 on the contrary, um, we're using data in this crisis like never before in terms of the in terms of how we're using it to underpin the decisions that we make in terms of the sheer quantity of information and transparency that we're putting in the public domain. Now, I strongly agree with the need for high quality use of statistics. I think it's incredibly important. Um, and when we're building the testing program, we built it at record pace, getting up to that, you know, now 200,000, 230,000 tests you saw there each day. Of course, putting in place the, uh, the data measures to be able to get high quality statistics out is another part of building that system. And it, and it yep. does take time. Another thing that knocks people's confidence is if they think it's one rule for you and another rule for somebody else. And there was that image, wasn't there, of you coming up to someone oh, in the yeah. House of Commons. And here we are. I there know. are, putting your hand on the I, back of someone. Just, I, I know. Uh, it was just totally natural. You know, this shows how difficult social distancing is. I, I know these rules inside out. And um, I hadn't seen my colleague for for weeks. Um, and I really like him. So I walked up, and it was totally natural. And then, as you can see, we saw, we thought, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh right. hold, hold on. But and immediately, I'm immediately, sure you understand this. They think if even the health secretary I know, can't I remember know, the rules, I know. All I can do, thinking? all I can do, is say I'm incredibly sorry for this momentary breach. It's because I'm human, and we're all human. And I'm, and it sh I'm no less determined to follow the rules because of, because of a, because of a, a momentary breach. One last question. It's not in your area of responsibility, but it is important for you as the spokesman, effectively, for the government today. The community secretary, Robert Jenrick, has had criticism about overruling a planning inquiry, saying that he would give permission for a planning development uh, and then it was overruled. Now, the reason I raise it with you today is his defence was, look, he sat next to a rich guy, who happens to be a Tory donor at a dinner, Richard Desmond, and said uh, that uh, he wouldn't really discuss it. We now know he had a four-minute video was played to him of this thing. Isn't it time we just got all the facts out there on this? Get all the paperwork. Well, Mr Jemrick uh, answered questions for an hour in the House of Commons this week. Uh, and I think, you know, he's put out a statement about this, which is perfectly reasonable, that he was, he, uh, he was put on a table with Mr Desmond. He didn't know that that's where he was sitting uh, uh, before. So I think his explanation is, is entirely reasonable. Matt Hancock, Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, thank you very much indeed.